wonder if we have the record. Because we have to read a certain record for that one character to unlock. And we have quite a few. Locked when the project ends and all characters' golden token of friendship is obtained except Azar. Ah. So don't rank up Azar all the way just yet. The abnormal climate continues. The Super Ice Age is coming. A new, new segment scraped from an article about abnormal climate change. Details the global cooling phenomenon which could cause the Earth to freeze along with the extreme cold. Year something, August 7th, 8-11. The abnormal climate changes that took place this year are rapidly developing into an uncontrollable state. Ice temperature on the 6th was 32 degrees Celsius, however, the temperature dropped to minus 50 degrees the very next morning. The entire nation covered with snow seemingly entered an ice age in the middle of August. Also, hails of over 20 centimeters of diameter are devastating the central region. This unknown phenomenon is occurring not only in Korea, but also around the world. There are many countries that have been completely paralyzed by countless casualties. The world is quite literally freezing. The Earth is now in a state of complete ruin and chaos. In the morning of the 7th, a spokesman from the United Nations issued a statement that this is only a temporary phenomenon that will soon fade away. However, the public consensus was negative, presumably due to the fact that the global community has already suffered severe damage. Some experts claim that the Earth's average temperature could fall below minus 170 degrees Celsius within a few years. Researchers worldwide are, are conducting investigations day and night to discover the identity of this abnormal super ice age. Still, there seems to be no answers. Meanwhile, evacuations continue from all over the country in an effort to relocate people to relatively warmer regions. There is an emergency government meeting planned this afternoon to address the sudden population movement. Victims are urging the government to establish a clear plan for the days ahead. Ah, okay. Fatal defect. BH-1412, fatal defect discovered. Most of humanity is in cryopreservation to survive the global cooling phenomenon. However, rumors spread that the supplied cryogenic pods have a fatal defect. Ah. The BH-1412, a cryogenic pod model developed by the world-renowned IT corporation Nova, has been distributed all across the globe. However, a recent discovery by a YouTube channel has revealed a fatal defect within the BH-1412. Currently the video has been deleted from the platform, but archives of the video are still being distributed across the internet. The video provides direct evidence of the system errors within the pod, and many insiders claim that the contents of the video are true without a shadow of dark. The cause of this defect is presumed to be an update that Nova released to fix an issue regarding the BH-1412. While cryogenic devices are based on the BH-1412 model, it is highly likely that other models from other companies will carry similar problems. That's not good. Many people are already using the BH-1412 cryogenic technology in preparation for the catastrophe, so this discovery is likely to stir major controversy worldwide. Following us, how the BH-1412 operated before the update. As the pod is started, the user was rapidly frozen and the observation of external temperature begins. Once the temperature drops to a certain threshold, the device switches to hibernation mode, and the human body can remain frozen without additional energy input. Ah. 
In this state, the BH-1412 is on standby until the temperature rises to adequate levels, in which case the device starts the defrosting sequence and awakens the user. This revolutionary technology utilizes the extremely low temperature of the catastrophe to its advantage, and it was expected to preserve countless human lives for an extended period of time. However, recent studies have shown that temperatures could fluctuate erratically during the global cooling phenomenon. This means it is possible that the pod system could recognize a momentary shift in temperature as a sign to defrost the user. And humans awakened in this way would likely not survive if the temperature were to suddenly drop again. In response to this problem, NOVA has implemented a system update so that the pods can assess the external situation more precisely. However, this has created an entirely different problem. According to an analysis by the YTube video, the temperature sensing function will shut down once the pod reaches 80 years in hibernation mode. Ah. This means people will not be able to wake up even if the climate has returned to normal, and the eventual power outage could lead to death. A huge number of people have already entered the BH-1412 cryogenic devices to avoid the catastrophe, but those left behind are in utter shock at this new discovery. Experts claim that cryopreservation technology is still in its primitive... something reached a limit due to lack of time and resources. Even amidst this controversy, NOVA is still recommending people to enter cold sleep. And Peter, CEO of NOVA, is ignoring all warnings about halting the distribution of cryogenic. And due to the lack of viable alternatives, the United Nations is supportive of NOVA's opinion. Hmm. NOVA headquarters in flames. Those who feel anger towards NOVA gather in terrorist mobs. A giant corporation once hailed by the world now faces its demise. Tense criticism against NOVA has persisted since the discovery of the defect in BH-1412. Citizens are destroying the local distributed cryogenic pods and posting pictures of it online, and terrorist mobs are appearing all around the world. This morning, an armed faction appeared in a laboratory at NOVA headquarters and opened fire, resulting in numerous casualties. The most shocking detail is nearby civilians who heard the commotion joined forces with the armed faction taking part in the attack. One glance at the crime scene is enough to tell the extent of the current public outrage against NOVA. It is an event that truly displays the state of anarchy the world has fallen into. That was a short one. Together with... Corrupted. Together with 66AS7JW. A picture taken in an unconfirmed location. There's a picture of a blonde woman smiling brightly and a woman with glasses who seems to be shy. This might be the one. Ah, just a picture, okay. Trail. No, no, an unidentified shadow acts suspiciously inside a dark room. The perpetrator breathes urgently, revealing clear hostility toward a certain someone. Hmm. Flying that bastard. Didn't expect him to be this thoroughly prepared. Loop system. To prepare for extreme emergencies that could occur within the arc. Upon activation, it overwrites everyone's memories with their initial memory data. Is everyone deluded to believe that it's their first time connecting to the arc? Must be the safety net that Klein kept hidden all this time. If he ever screws up, it never happened. Is that the plan? Hmm. Wait, hold on a sec. Might have thought looping back would be enough to solve any problem. But what if the loop is completely bugged and memories don't reset? What if the dead come back to life and the horrible memories remain? What would that kind of world look like? Haha. <laughs> you will regret recreating this system, Klein. Back, Mr. Klein. Well done today. Zara, Haru, where are you going? We were on our way to eat. We skipped lunch. Oh, Mr. Klein, what about the connection testing schedule next week? Dex, is he back already? I don't have enough time. I should go with plan B. I have no choice. 
This system involves wiping everyone's memories. There must be a segment that prevents clans' memories from being reset. If I utilize that... It worked. I should get out of here before he notices me. I made the edits in a rush, but I managed to create a flaw in the system. I can probably make the finishing touches after I connect to the Ark. This will destroy it. The Ark Project. Look forward to it, Klein. Hmm. Ah. Virtual world start. The Ark Project, a culmination of talent and effort, has been launched successfully. However, at the opening ceremony, civilians realize that the Ark is not a paradise, but another reality they will continue to struggle in. Mr. Klein, the population check has been completed. 600 people in cold sleep, including the research team, 600 within their virtual world. A perfect match. Thank you, we should get started then. Now let us begin the Ark Project opening ceremony. First there will be a speech by the Executive Director. Greetings everyone, my name is Klein, the Executive Director of the Ark Project. I am honored to be in this glorious moment together with everyone. This moment will surely be recorded in the history of mankind and it will serve as a great leap towards a brilliant future. To the many people who supported the launch of the project, once again, I offer my sincerest gratitude. Before explaining about our future lives here, I would like to preface with a brief overview of the project. As we all know, the climate changes that started a few years ago in a matter of hours developed into an unprecedented catastrophe that swept the Earth. At this point, the entirety of Earth has already been frozen, and it has become completely uninhabitable for mankind. The remnants of humanity fled to underground bunkers or participated in cryogenics. With the future being hopeless and unpredictable as it is, many people viewed cryogenics as an act of suicide. With that in mind, we embarked on a project that combines cryogenics with the ability to observe the outside world. This is the origin of the Ark Project. The Ark Project, like many other projects, is based on freezing our bodies. However, we have managed to create an environment where the body is placed in a cold sleep, but the mind is connected to a virtual reality program. From today onwards, we will be able to live comfortably within this virtual world. Next are instructions regarding our lives here in the Ark. As previously announced, researchers will live in the research area and the civilians will live in the village. For the safety and security of our facilities, civilians will be restricted from entering the research area. We ask for your understanding. And about life within the village, our general manager, Miss Sis, will explain the details. I'm the general manager of the Ark Project, Sis. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Miss Sis will oversee all daily activities within the Ark starting for the day. She possesses extraordinary talent in managing people and facilities. Furthermore, she is the only one who can assume my position in the case of an emergency. Researchers and civilians alike, please consider Miss Sis as the actual person in charge of your daily lives. I leave the rest to you. Understood. First of all, I would like to point out some details about the Ark Project. This virtual world that we stand on is a 99% copy of the real world. Unlike other virtual worlds and popular VR media, all laws of reality apply within here. Of course, dangerous aspects such as pain or death are restricted by a special protector, so there's no need to worry. Because the Ark functions based on the laws of reality, most of what can be done in real life can be done in here as well. 
For example, farming, building, and raising livestock, all of these activities will help you acquire basic necessities. Each and every one of your actions will contribute towards building a new human society. Make a new human society? What in the world are you talking about? We need to work even inside a virtual world? Why do we need to do that? Please stay silent, everyone. If you have any questions, we'll answer them one by one. Hello, it seems like we can do various things within this world, but what are we supposed to do after the opening ceremony is over? First of all, after receiving your keys, you should check your living quarters. After that, you can engage in various activities to develop our new society. For example, you can craft and sell tools, obtain meat and hides through livestock, grow various crops, or run a restaurant that sells delicious food. Once we have a basic social foundation, you could even buy land and build convenience facilities or entertainment facilities. With the advancement of technology, we could use computers, smartphones, etc. Life within this arc would become more convenient once we can use the technology of the real world. So is there a convenient system for tasks such as cooking or building? This is a virtual world after all, right? I would like to reiterate that the laws of reality apply within the arc. Such unrealistic systems do not exist here. We have to do everything with our own hands. What? You want us to do these things with our own hands? You said this project will allow us to live comfortably. Why the hell do we need to work? Does the realism need to go this far? Let's just live comfortable lives. Please let us finish our words. Everyone. Why did we participate in the Ark Project? Well, to survive, of course. Indeed, we all struggled to survive, and thanks to those struggles, we are still alive to this day. But now that we've achieved our goals, does this mean we should stop struggling? That... I do not think so. Everyone, what is the definition of comfort? Doing nothing all day? Pursuing no dreams while waiting for the storm to pass? Can this really be called comfort? The comfortable life we propose is primarily survival. This means that no one freezes to death and we can all live under the warm sun. Think about all the people outside who couldn't even afford cheap cryogenics and froze to death. But, but I've never done any hard labor in my entire life. Do not worry too much. We will ensure that you can receive the bare minimum necessities. The aforementioned living quarters are yours to keep, and it is also possible to generate funds and resources by trading with merchant NPCs. With this method, you can obtain everything from food and clothing to any other basic necessities. We will provide further instructions regarding this topic in the near future. You may question why we even need to labor within a virtual reality. This is totally understandable. However, I want us to set our sights for the distant future. You may very well be the last survivors of humanity. We may need to spend up to 1,000 years in this place, but if we laze around while waiting for the grand catastrophe to end, do you believe we could survive in the world after the catastrophe has ended? After the catastrophe? The ecosystem will have been frozen for several hundred years by the time we wake up. The world we see then might not be the world we remember. At that state, do you think we could truly survive within the devastated Earth? Keep this in mind, the Ark is by no means a paradise or refuge. This is another reality in which we will continue to struggle in. I ask for your cooperation and understanding in our cause. Now, if there are no more questions, let us begin a new life within this Ark. There is a small celebration party planned after this beach. We have prepared a feast to commemorate the successful launch of the Ark project. I hope this can be a good opportunity to deepen our bonds for the times ahead. This is all I have for today. Thank you.
Uh, second day. The morning after the opening ceremony, Researcher Hine felt disheartened that the reactions from the civilians were different than what he had imagined. Any and Sis reassure him, telling him that not everyone was against the plan. This is bad, we're all doomed. I know, told you everything will be alright. Sure, there was a bit of commotion in the opening ceremony, but the celebration party was pretty lively. I've already made a few friends, you know. Th that's because you're so friendly and social. No, before that, there's no way a noisy place with a lot of people wouldn't be lively. Was the mood really that bad? I didn't notice. I don't like crowded places, so I took a look around the entire area with a czar. I saw a couple of people who seemed very discontent. The thug-looking guy, was it Silverstein? He had a scary look on his face while murmuring things to his group. I don't know her name, but some tan-skinned woman was caught by security while trying to snatch food. I don't know what happened after that. She ran away with inhuman speed and vanished. That's weird. Why would she steal party food? There's no real reason to do that. Maybe she's trying to stock up on food for the near future. Thanks to the protector, we wouldn't die even if we starved. However, since we have to rebuild society from the ground up, it'd be difficult to find good food for a while. Well, there's all kinds of people in the world, I suppose. Don't worry about it too much. How do I not worry if a rebellion happens? If a what happens? Ah, Mrs. H Hello, did she come here to eat? Did you sleep well? I hope you didn't have a hard time adjusting to the virtual world. I slept wonderfully. So please continue what you were talking about. Some kind of discontent and rebellion, I think it was. Hein seems worried that the public reaction wasn't very good. public reaction? We spent night and day developing this world under Mr. Clan's orders, right? Azara and I, the development team, worked so hard on this project, I thought that people would have been delighted to see this virtual world. But after seeing those cold reactions, maybe we should have made a comfortable virtual reality than taking all these extra steps for realism. What do you think would happen to humanity if that were the case? But what Think about why our boss told us to make a virtual reality similar to our own world. Everything in moderation. Humanity needs technology for sure, but excessive amounts of it will hurt our ability to survive. We are not only refugees from the grand catastrophe, but we have a duty to carry on the flames of humanity after it is over. I mean, think about yesterday's opening ceremony. Was everyone really against this virtual world as you claim? That you fully expected to have some unhappy people. Life in the Ark has just begun. Once we all settle into our new lives, I'm sure this discontent will fight away. You really think so? Hein, the virtual reality system is perfect. You and your development team did an excellent job. There's no need to feel down just because a few people expressed discontent. We are all alive and well thanks to your efforts. And Miss says, I moved to tears. Hey, there's no need to cry. You can do it, big boy Hein. I, I told you not to call me that. I checked on the civilians after waking them up today. It seems like the atmosphere is already becoming more peaceful. Everything will be alright. Miss says, thank you so much. I somehow feel more motivated. I should tell Azar about this, too. The almighty Miss says, saves the day with her benevolence. Well, well, I can't have my subordinates filled with worry. It would reduce work efficiency. They are going to be busy again from here on out. Stay vigilant and let's weather through this storm together. All right. Lucy and her friends basking in the warm sunlight. They are enjoying the comfortable weather as if the days spent in shivering cold were all a lie. Warm day. So interesting, don't you think? What's so interesting, Joey? Just a week ago, we were stuck underground in murderous cold. 
Now we're basking in the warm rays of the sun. Merlin, Joy suddenly turned super emotional. Zzz. She's sleeping. Oh my goodness, oh my. What was that, Lucy? Joey got so emotional that he cried. Who's crying? Aha! But Joey's right. If we hadn't entered the Ark, we wouldn't have felt this happiness. We really should be thankful to our parents. Hey, my little friends. Annie. Who's little? There you are, sunbathing. I was enjoying the blessings of nature. Ark life, indeed. Everyone is addicted to sunbathing now that the sun is out. I brought you ice cream. Do you want some? I want a bite. Gimme. You really are a little kid, aren't you? What's that? Thank you for the treat. By the way, Lucy, you talk to Merlin and Annie with respect, but why do you talk to me differently? Joe, you're the same as me. I don't pay respect to fools. You, you little... You scared me. What is it, sis? Photo time. Everyone was having fun, so I took one. Hey, you give it to me. Me bickering with Lucy makes me feel like I'm down to her level. Yeah, we're not in the same level. I'm way above you. Can't you ever be kind? You'll be in big trouble. I'll let my father know about this. Joey, cut it out. The ice cream is melting. What does that have to do with the ice cream melting? Lucy, your brat, come back here. Whoa, he's angry. I'll get you back when I catch you up. Hmm. Edited photo. A photo taken by a group of friends in a warm day. It must have been a long time since this photo was taken, since the image seems to be fading away. Hmm. That must have been what it was just about. Inside the mines. Citizens are employed in the mines to extract natural resources. However, the mine collapses due to a moment of carelessness. Hmm. Everstein. Alright, we're doing great. Keep it up, boys. Yes, sir. A huge tunnel located 200 meters underground in close proximity to the village. I became a work supervisor under boss's orders. When we first set a foot within the virtual world, this place was nothing but a barren wasteland. As the researchers said, we needed to build a new society. The outside of the village was in complete ruins, just like how it would be when the catastrophe is over. It was possible to gather some resources from the ruins, but nowhere near enough to support the population, and just when things seemed hopeless, natural resources were discovered from various parts of the land, and people started making tools from the ruin scraps which laid a basic infrastructure for our society. I never thought I'd be working in the mines of all places. I thought all I needed to do was swing a pickaxe, but it's harder than expected, don't you think? Are you sure we were even doing it properly? Who knows, it's not like any of us have ever worked in the mines before. Making a stick in the mines without any safety training, those bastards. Hey over there, who told you to chatter? What's that guy doing here? Apparently he's supposed to be our chief. I'm about to burst from the stress. Mining is the basis of all manufacturing. It's the source of coal and iron, as well as various other fuels and metals. In other words, to establish dominance in this world, we need to seize control over the mines. Was our boss's opinion. Damn it! if it wasn't for boss's orders, I wouldn't have to deal with these shitheads. Hey you, you're the one who mentioned the safety training, right? We don't need things like that. Huh? What if there's an accident? Don't forget, we're in a virtual world. We can't die or get hurt here. A while ago, I actually tried to amputate an arm from one of my boys, but I could only leave a small cut on him. He did feel some degree of pain, but nowhere near the pain of having an arm cut off. And the wound vanished in an instant. We're truly invincible here. You understand now? Simply mining can't do any harm to us. Really? That's amazing. Shame that doesn't make the work any less hard, though. I thought I gave you enough break time. We still haven't filled the daily quota yet. Now quit yammering and get back to work. 
Damn it, these wimps wouldn't even stare at me in the face if it were normal circumstances. Since there's no pain or death in this world, violence is completely meaningless. Such a cruel world for a monster like me. Huh? Pant pant so tired. The air is so stuffy and humid, can't breathe, I'm gonna faint. Hey you, stop slacking. What, you got a problem with me? Who told you to take a break? Huh, you? Aren't you the son of Joel? What? You know my father? Joel has an iron grip on the ranches along with the people at Eclipse. Why choose hard labor at the, the mines when you can just work under your dad? Th that's because I'm elite. My father told me I could be a help to everyone if I came here. Joel said that? For fuck's sake, how's the little kid gonna help here? No, maybe Joel left him here because he was useless. What? What? You heard that right? Joel doesn't give a damn about you. Don't be ridiculous. I'm a proud son of my father. Witness my technique. Just grab the pickaxe like this and... As soon as the boy struck with his pickaxe, a thunderous boom rang across the mines along with a dusty wind. Everyone halted their tasks, startled by the sudden impact. What, what was that? What's that sound? Do you guys hear that? Why can I have everyone's attention? I'll go and assess the situation. Just stay here for a bit. Hey, Brat, you're coming with me. But why me? You need to go back. You're only going to be a nuisance here. Th no, I can't. Why? If I return to my father empty-handed, I'll... Boss, boss! Subordinate rushed over from the direction of loud noise. What's going on? Didn't I tell you to call me chief around these parts? The, the tunnel. The, the tunnel collapsed. Uh, and people are trapped under the rocks. What? what? An abandoned underground mine of questionable condition. Workers who have close to zero expertise in mining, as well as a complete lack of safety training. Who needs safety training anyway? This is a virtual world. We're invincible. They thought nothing could scare them in this world, not even the fear of death. All these circumstances combined were more than enough to cause carelessness. As the ceiling collapsed, the passageway was blocked with dirt and stones. In front of the blocked passage, people were shouting over the piles of stones. Hey, are you okay? Can you hear me? S save, cough. Can't, can't breathe. When I breathe, dirt in my lungs, cough. H hang in there, I'll get you out. Oh no, we need to help him. Hey kid, what do you think you're doing? Put down that pickaxe. Why are you stopping me if we don't save him now? Are you crazy? We're gonna get buried alive too. Like above you. Just a little more pressure and the whole thing's gonna collapse. What do you suppose we do? If they call him at the very least, they won't die. And most importantly, don't touch the stone pile. We just have to wait. Wait for the right help to arrive. I did say that, but are they really going to be okay? There's a protector in this virtual world that prevents you from dying. Pain is also reduced by a significant amount. However, what if you are in a state where your body is crushed and unable to move? What if you can't see anything and every time you try to breathe you instead get a mouthful of dirt? Even if death is prevented and pain is reduced, wouldn't you feel fear beyond comprehension? And it would only get worse the longer it continues. Dying would be quick and painless in comparison. Damn it all. I never wanted to come to a place like this. It's noisier than usual today. I quickly observed the people from a corner of the village. This has been my usual afternoon routine. By observing the activity of human groups, you can learn more about others, and that knowledge will inevitably become tangible benefits. However, the mood seems to be slightly different from usual. It's not the usual boring atmosphere. Never get into unnecessary trouble, I've always maintained the position of a bystander, but... 
I should go check it out. Somebody help. Town Square presumed to be the source of the sound. In the middle of a crowded area, a young girl was screaming urgently. There's an accident. Anyone, please help. Oh dear, what happened? See, the mines collapsed, and people are buried under the rocks. The, the mines collapsed? How could that be? We need to rescue them. Rescue? Wait, but is that even possible for us to rescue them? Yeah, maybe it'd be possible in the real world, but now we can barely even farm. Even if we had the equipment, we risk making the situation worse. Ah, this is bad. Researchers, let's call the researchers for help. And since it's a virtual world, maybe the researchers could do something about it with their technology. But the researchers aren't supposed to interfere with our lives. People are dying here. Is that really a concern? They should be held accountable for this accident. Protector would probably save them from dying, but I, I can... I can try talking to the people at the research lab. I know one of the researchers there. Maybe if I can ask them. Uh, is that so? Then we'll be in your debt. Let's go to the mines. Maybe there's something we can do to help. Hmm. Are you alive in a world where everyone is immortal? Ooh, this is quite interesting. Let's go spectate. 